What's going on guys? Cam Sweet here from the Garage Connection. We're going to talk a little bit about this air compressor today. So I use this air compressor almost exclusively for sandblasting. What I found was, being in Virginia and all this humidity in the summer, I was getting nothing but moisture inside the blasting pot, inside the blasting media, and it was just making a mess. So I came up with a way to run a condenser on this air compressor to get that moisture out before it gets into the tank and before it gets into the sandblaster. So we're gonna go through some of that today. I'm gonna to link the part number to the unit I use in the description and hopefully this helps you out. Right? It's the goal to be able to do more in the garage without spending a bunch of money on stuff you don't really need. So we're gonna go through this, check this out, and tell me what you think. All right, so what I get here is a normal 220 volt air compressor, right? I adapted it to run off my welder outlet that way I don't need to put a separate plug in the garage here. But basically I got a electric motor, belt driven, two cylinder air compressor. So what I did is I came out of the discharge of this air compressor with a fitting that goes into some 3 8 OD copper tubing, all right? I ran the copper tubing around and instead of dumping it right into the tank like the factory setup, I came into another fitting and went into this this is nothing but an automatic transmission cooler from, I think, Derail is the company. I got it off Amazon. Again, I'll link it in the description. So I came into this automatic transmission cooler, and where I put this was right in front of the air intake that off the belt and the pulley that drives the, uh, the air compressor. So, so this thing's sucking air through it the whole time. What that's going to do, not only is it going to tremendously lower the heat coming out of this discharge of this air compressor, but it's gonna cause all the water vapor to condense and run to the bottom. So that's the way I piped it, from the top to the bottom. Now I came out the bottom, and because this is significantly colder, I was able to run some braided stainless, uh, just kind of general purpose line that I got from uh, Race Flux, and I'll put a link to their website in the description. They're not sponsoring me or anything. But uh, I ran some Race Flux with some, you know, universal, you make it yourself into just a normal uh, filter dryer separator, water separator. And, uh, and then from there, I came out of the top with some more of the braided line, and I went into the check valve and down into the compressor tank. So every time this thing starts up, because this holds no pressure on it, this vent opens. So every time the compressor starts, it auto bleeds itself down. And then once enough air has built up in here, then it go ahead and shuts the drain valve and it starts filling the tank. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this on and I got a heat gun. I'm going to shoot a discharge temperature at the compressor outlet. I'm going to shoot an inlet temperature at here and show you how much of an air change there is. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, the ends of this thing are JIC, all right? They're not 45 degree flare. So that little clamp you just spin and you make the flare in the end of this copper tube. That's not going to work for this, all right? That's a 45-degree flare. This is JIC or AN flare, 37-degree. So that's why I went with these fittings. Could you just use a flare nut and tighten it down on there? Probably. I mean, if you crush the hell out of it, it's probably not going to leak anyways. I didn't want to do that, so just keep that in mind. As This is made to go to JIC, 37-degree flare, not SAE 45 degree flare. All right, so there we have it. So we saw we had about a 230 degree coming out of the compressor. The same here, which makes sense because the tube's like two feet long. And then down here, we're sitting at 99 degrees. All right, so we're losing, we're losing 140 degrees between right here and right here. All right, this is a fantastic way to do this. Um, I've seen people that what they do is they put a little electric fan right here off like a computer or something like that. 220 volt, they wire it into the compressor contacts and they use that for auxiliary cooling. I don't think that's really necessary. Uh, the only thing I have to do, because I use this thing basically wide open when I do sandblasting, is I have to cool down that compressor motor because that thing trips the thermal overload very quickly. Um, so let me know what you think. Again, I'm going to link the stuff in the description. 
And, uh, and let me know if you did something similar to this and it worked out for you. Or if you see something I could do better, let me know. All right, guys. Cam Sweet from the Garage Connection. Stay on those projects.